Hey guys, Brett Williams here. Welcome to another episode of the LWO Show. So, so super excited. This is a very special episode for myself because I have a past client, Siri Johnson here, who is going to share her journey from the acting world into becoming a journey coach and who knows where else. So Siri, so grateful to have you here. Welcome. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> You're more than welcome. It's absolute pleasure. And as I said, like, I'm so super excited to have you here because um, you know, we, we spent those 12 weeks together going through a number of things. And it's so super exciting to have you come on here and share your story because I know there's a lot of value in it for people who are watching and, uh, and just to, yeah, just to, look, I like hearing your story. So I just want to get you on here and, and, and share that more. So um, I will, yeah, first and foremost, I appreciate you for being here and I will let you kick it off wherever you feel appropriate along the way. So take it away. Yeah. Oh, great. The journey from the voice of theory. That is a curious thing. Well, I, I live in Minnesota in the middle of the United States and I would say that my journey to where I am now began about five years ago, probably almost to the date where I'd had a run of, of some shows, some musical theater shows, because that's my thing, song and, well, dance only when they make me, but a little song and dance and just having that musical voice, that's been my whole past. And I'd had four shows back to back, which is really quite good. You're like, this is what we're aiming for, right? Four shows back to back. And I was in the middle of this space that was just <laughs> surprisingly, somebody else had gotten a show and I was just feeling this angst. I mean, this just like envy of their path and just sort of this general mm, discontentedness where I was at. And I said, you know, something really needs to change right now. And I didn't know exactly how the change was gonna happen, but I knew that the change needed to happen. And what for me that was, was sort of slowly letting go of my actor identity and truly embracing whatever else was next. I didn't know what that meant. And so it meant I wanted to let go of my attachment to having that be the only way I knew how to make money. I'm like, oh, well, I'm an actor. I wouldn't say it in air quotes because I was pretty good at it by then. And I didn't need to like say I'm an actor. Um, and so. I just adventured into doing other things and learning how to make money in different ways. And I didn't want to wait tables. I left that in my thirties and I just opened the door. And it wasn't until about mm, two years after that, that I said, I want to do something else. Maybe I want to be a personal trainer. And I was like, no, that doesn't fit me at all. I literally went and interviewed some people and I was like, I don't, I don't want to be a personal trainer. That's just not a path for me. And so finally I opened the door of coaching and I investigated some things online and I had at the time a negative connotation to life coaching that really gets put in air quotes um, because of an experience with an ex-boyfriend and getting life coached when I didn't want to be life coached. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, ah, I couldn't do it that path. And I sort of had in my mind somewhere the world of, NLP, neuro linguistic programming, hypnotherapy, that wasn't even in the mix yet. So I was like, what could I do? And so I saw the word health coaching, which I'd never seen before in my whole life. And I thought, hmm, this might be an interesting place for me because I definitely had a very close relationship and I still do with just the love of food, but the love of food way above and beyond its actual nutritive value. It meant, it meant all the love, it meant all of the feeling processing, which was not actually processing, was through the container of Ben and Jerry's or into the bottom of the bag of saltine crackers with the stick of butter, um, just from one after the other. And even though I'd done a lot of work prior to that to sort of make peace with myself and find my self-love, which started definitely in the early 30s, in my 30s, here I was at 45 years old, realizing there was more going on that I needed to work through. And so I found a really great, for me at the time, health coaching program that allowed me to take some of those final steps for myself, not final because it's never ending, you know, self-growth. So some of those steps to really make peace with myself, 
with my body, with my relationship with food. And that opened the door to coaching. And that allowed me to really invite other people in to look at their relationship with food, which I found after time had unfolded, that we never talked about food. Sure, every once in a while, there was a conversation about sugar, or maybe I should drink some more water because I'm dehydrating right in front of your eyes. And that's always good. But we talked about everything else. We talked about self-love. We talked about relationships. We talked about money. And that was when I realized that maybe for me personally, the health coaching door wasn't where I wanted to live. I wanted to swing open some other doors. Mm -hmm. And so I did find a, a, a local company here in Minneapolis that was NLP. And that had been in the back of my mind. And I'm not sure if you've had this experience. And I, I'm guessing that uh, viewers have had this experience. But there's an inkling, something that you've kept in a file cabinet deep yeah. in your mind or deep in your pocket of gold. And you're like, now is the time I, I found this. And then you find the right place, the right time, the right teachers, and you unfold that. And for me, they needed to come in that order because I wouldn't have been able to open up the door to my soul and my emotions and been able to walk through just a lot of difficult emotions that I had not yet processed. So the NLP opened that door and gosh, once I opened the door to really process all of the feelings and emotions that I had not yet done up to that 47 and a half years old, that's when I was really able to start working with other people and say, if I'm willing to go this deep, they say, you can only bring your client as far as you're willing to go. And I'm pretty, I'm willing to go pretty far. And so that was so enlightening to me to just feel the yucky feelings because on the other side of them, it was maybe not always rainbow, rainbows and unicorns and, and sunshine, but it was a lot brighter on the other side through the emotions. And the only way to, to heal it is to feel it. That's yeah. my personal opinion. And so my heart and soul was really in emotional well-being, uh, but that needed to come through the door of my relationship with food. And I didn't know that until I'd already gone through and taken those steps. Mm -hmm. So as you know me from coaching, I'm fairly long-winded, ah, <laughs> but I thought that was a pretty good summation, personally. <laughs> Absolutely, it's fantastic. There's so much value in there, and there's a, there's a number of questions that have come up, which I'm gonna dive into very shortly. Um, so yes, it's so super exciting. And as always, so full of vibrance and energy. <laughs> <laughs> which is good. <laughs> So the, the first area that I want to dive into there, because um, food is something that I would assume that many people have uh, an issue with, whether it be um, emotionally eating or uh, maybe a little bit more or whatever, whatever have you. And look, I'll put my hand up and say that I do also very much emotionally eat. And I know over the last sort of six months to a year, that's been something that has shown up in my world as a coping mechanism. And to a large degree, I just... Uh, got to a point where I was just accepted, okay, well, this is what I, this is it for the time being because I don't have the mental capacity to deal with learning a little bit more about food or creating great food for me to have. So it was just going for the easier and quicker options, which is not necessarily the good thing because uh, at the end of the day, the, the fuel that we're putting into our body impacts our mental capacity and impacts our ability to do work and all these other things as well. So just going back to that time where that food relationship wasn't the, the healthiest and then transforming it, what were some of the thoughts that were going through your head? What was really the big motivator to, to shift your life around 180 when it came to food and then starting to learn more about food? Because I know through our previous conversations how passionate you are about good food and everything these days. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it definitely was a step-by-step -step process along the way. In those teenage years or somewhere around maybe like the fourth grade, I made a decision from maybe something that somebody said that I was fat. When I put that title on myself and told myself that story, it was, that was the story. And that led all the way through junior high. And I was never like, I was never that heavy, but I perceived myself as I am fat. And so that was the lens through which I saw everything in life. And because that was my belief, that's what I saw. And whenever I saw anything in life that proved that to be true, I'm like, see, there you go. I don't have the boyfriend because I'm fat. 
she has that because she's thinner when really I wasn't opening myself up to actually connect with somebody that might have had something else to do with it because I wasn't able to love myself so how could anybody else so and I definitely uh so through the junior high and high school years and into college I would connect very easily in the the body realm because I was like oh if I just go there easily that means that I'm I'm loved and available because that was all I knew how to give was like in body but I wasn't brave enough to actually give my 100% soul because as soon as you give all your soul like you giving your body is like that's easy to do but giving your soul that means if you reject if you're rejected like that's it that's all of you mm. so it wasn't until that relationship and this is when I mm, there was one step in the middle somewhere while working on a cruise ship and you're I was a singer and I mean I still am a singer but I was the singer on the show and there were a lot of other people that were the dancers and you know you're getting weighed every week because they want to make sure you're not gonna have an eating disorder and that was their deal and that was challenging enough to get weighed every week like please what fun is that but there were a lot of girls you know running around in in their skivvies and their feathers and whatnot and technically it's their job to look good in their feathers. Is it fair? Does that make sense? No, it's a fickle business. But I still needed to look good and they wanted to make sure that um, no one was developing an eating disorder and that people were taking care of themselves. And it was somewhere in the midst of that when I was up until four in the morning, just stressing. I mean, just thinking about things and, and just being angst ridden about the food that I was going to eat the next day and how I was going to track it. I finally made an epiphany when I looked around at the cruise ship. I was like, okay, I'm not fat, but this was 33 years old that I finally wow. came to that conclusion. And I'd spent all of those years from fourth grade when some person said, you're too fat for this sport or whatever, until 33 years old, wasting all that time and energy. Now, I'm not saying that from 33 to like 35, I didn't continue to waste some energy. And then I had the relationship with this ex-boyfriend who was becoming a life coach and he was life coaching me that I made a realization and it was through some trauma. I mean, just like, you know, that kind of like, I'm never going to make it through this moment. I think I'm going to die right now that I was giving 95% of myself because I wasn't willing to give that extra 5% yep. because if that extra 5%, then I was going to be all rejected. So it was that moment in that relationship. And even though the relationship didn't last, what I knew from that point forward at 35 years old, maybe 34, was that I was going to need to, in future relationships, give it my 100%. Mm -hmm. And it was going to be okay if I did and the relationship didn't work. So that was sort of the beginning of the real healing. And then you turn 40 and you're like, I'm 40. And now I'm a real grown-up as if 30 wasn't enough of a grown-up. <laughs> and so I just sort of built upon that and really just learned to live in my body as a grown woman. And there were ebbs and flows of, you know, the good 20 pound swing from really low to a little like, uh, you know, on the higher range, but all within a healthy range. Mm -hmm. And so then some of those final steps of all that I had built up to that point, once I went through the, the coaching and just saw some other things and learned a little bit more about some of that relationship with food and just the, the letting go of that, what I realized was what a waste of my freaking time and energy. If I, I once had an ex-boyfriend that was not that one that was way before that said, if you spent half, even one modicum of the amount of energy and money that you spent on losing weight or trying to do that, you'd be a millionaire. You'd be a president, you know, of, of something <laughs> of myself. But I did not finally realize until early 40s and somewhere during the training, if I spent my energy on something more fruitful, instead of counting this or being obsessed about that, how much more enjoyable life is going to be. So I let go of that thought. I let yep. go of that belief that I needed to waste my energy on that. And that freed up everything. So because we, literally, yeah, I was um, just going to say, if you have a pencil or pen, you could drop it. Yep. And it's easy as that, that you can drop a thought and choose to not believe that. So just jumping into that a little bit deeper, um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in the health thing because it's a, a, a fundamental process, I guess, with no matter what's going on, that attachment to identity. And, and to some degree, this is also the transition between the actor to the, to the coach identity as well. 
Um, but actually, I'm going to shift that a little bit more around labels. So yeah. the label that you had was I'm fat. And that was yeah. something that was projected upon you when you were in, uh, in primary school by somebody. And then there was that shift in that dropping that label. Now, one of the things that I see in society these days, and it could be even, uh, I'm going to go there. It could even be the, the label of being, I'm depressed. I'm, I'm this, I'm that. And labels themselves can be so detrimental because depending on what mindset you're in at that current point in time, and depending on who gives you that label being somebody of authority because they have a piece of paper and they have this, um, this credibility, then all of a sudden that is something that gets um, burnt into your DNA as to who you are as an individual. So coming back to, as you were saying, when they had that realization looking around the cruise ship and that was when that identity and that label dropped, what was, um, I guess, what was some of the awareness in that for yourself and how did you actually recognize that this is the label and then this is the reality and then being able to make the distinction between the two of them to be able to disassociate them? I think what happened was as soon as I felt that shift, I literally, you know, those sandwich boards that people wear when they're outside promoting a restaurant. Yep. I felt as if when I had decided that for myself, I took off that sandwich board that says I'm fat or I think I'm fat. And I think I wore a new sandwich board that said, I'm so not fat. Yep. Which, uh, you know, I, 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 I love myself. I'm in this body. I'm in this space. But what I realized was that I could, with a snap of my fingers, choose to go back to that other belief but I'd already seen what was on the other side of it. And I did not want to go back to that trajectory. I was like, I've been there. I've done that. Let's try something else because this looks way more fun over on this side, believing this about myself. So it was actually a decision and I could have gone back and gone down the path, but I'd already done that. I was like, yep. all the learnings had happened there. There's a lot more learning there. And I love to learn even if, some, you know, chunky path along the way, you know, the best flowers grow in the stinkiest of compost without question. <laughs> <laughs> I've not heard that one before, but I can understand and relate to how that would work. Awesome fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, okay, so moving a little bit more into actually stepping into the journey coach identity and actually uh, becoming a coach. Now, I know that was something that was a bit of an internal battle for yourself. And the reason why I want to mm -hmm. highlight into here, because it's evident there's more and more people stepping into the coaching realm these days. And there's, with that comes the same sort of struggles and, and challenges that you and I have both gone through of stepping into the identity of it. And, and then also, I guess, um, uh, like muscle testing the ability to coach because you highlighted something very, very uh, evident in the industry as far as what I'm concerned is that with that past boyfriend who was te uh, learning to become a life coach and then coaching you without your permission, you know, that is something else that I just want to highlight because mm -hmm. I see it so often as well. People getting into the industry and they're, they're kind of forcing their coaching beliefs and views upon other people. So let's just sit with that for the moment and just open that box a little bit and just express uh, the experience that you had as the receiver of that. And also just what are the learnings and the lessons that you have gathered through that so that you're taking that into your coaching process now where, um, you know, getting permission to actually coach and creating the environment. Yes. You asked a very specific question and in that moment I had a specific answer. I feel that at the beginning, when I was first coaching, and I feel this to be that it was a real fine line. I could feel myself, and because a lot of the people that were some of my first coaching clients were people that knew me very well, and that were a friend or a relative, and I had to really figure out where is who I was before any of this began. And where is my coach? 
So when I'd have conversations with, with people, I'd say, okay, coach theory is coming out right now. Here's a coach theory commentary. Okay, back to theory, just theory, theory. And there was my, one of my biggest problems was not wanting to be vulnerable and let my still learning self, which is going to be forever and ever, stand out thinking, well, who is this person who is still struggling with some things? Who am I? And so I had to, one, accept that, but two, realize that I, even though I wanted to assist people with their process, not everybody wants to be assisted along their process because I didn't like help when it came to me. Like, you know what you should do here? And I've heard a great expression, don't should on people. Nobody likes to be should on. <laughs> and that if I didn't like that coming from other people, why would anyone that is just my friend or somebody that I meet along the way, um, why would they like that anymore? So if somebody's talking to me, being able to understand like, well, you know, is that a problem for you? You know, or would you, would you like any commentary about that from, you know, coach theory, or I don't know if you know this, but I like a separation. It's either a coaching relationship or it's, your relationship as a friend or a, a colleague, they need to be sort of separate. They're different hats. And um, I guess it depends upon everybody's personality, but it's a fine, it's a fine line. And especially when you're early on and you're excited and you're like, this yeah. has changed my life. You know, I feel like such a better, better human being. I can communicate better. I just feel freer. I want this for everyone that was the enthusiasm and that it comes from a good place, but it isn't always received in the way that it is meant that it is being sent. So learning to temper that just took some practice. Yeah, absolutely. And look, I, I'm guilty of, of that as well in the early days, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you, yeah. you do start to realize very quickly as to, um, it's more around permission because also if you don't get permission, you're not actually going to help anybody with a breakthrough because you don't have permission to speak to that space. But uh, no, no. so diving into the NLP and the, and I know recently hypnosis, what was your, what was your preconceived notion and idea or belief around NLP? And then what is it now after actually going into it? Because I think NLP is something and neuro-linguistic programming obviously is what, well, is what we're talking about is becoming a little bit more mainstream these days. There's a lot more people that are going out and learning it and understanding the tools, techniques and, and processes. Uh, but I think there's still some, um, well, there's always going to be people on the edge as to whether or not it's a hocus pocus and, and that side. And look, hypnosis is another one. I had a conversation with somebody on the podcast a, a, a little ep a few episodes ago and really just starting to open the door to hypnosis because that's something that interests me as well. Like I've done the NLP, but I haven't done the hypnosis. So mm -hmm. wanting to hear your spin on the hypnosis as well and how that has uh, impacted your life and also the lives of your clients. Mm -hmm. So free, free form question means free form answer. Um, I don't know if I had... I don't know what my preconceptions of NLP were. What I knew or what I thought that it was, was learning how to understand my body language and other people's body language, whether it be physical or the actual words being said or the, the tone that is being used to be of best communication with other people. And having an awareness of that for myself would allow me to communicate more readily and more effectively and make sure that I was being clear, but also seeing other people and being able to understand what they were actually saying above and beyond the words that were actually being said. Now, what I thought it was more of like, I thought it was more of a learn how to do the things that successful people do so that I can be a successful person. You know, if you learn how they speak, how they stand, how they take the breaks in their language, then I thought, oh, you just put those things on like a, you know, a, a little suit and you're like, I'm wearing the costume of someone who thinks they know what they're doing or talking about and thus I know what I'm talking about. So I think I thought it was more of a, a stance and a way of being. And I, 
know when it was developed and like through who developed it first and sort of came together. And what I found was, yes, of course, there's all that understanding of what we're saying and what other somebody else is saying and understanding body language and mirroring and maturing and ma- maturing <laughs> and creating r- rapport with other people. Yeah. But yet it became so much more. And the, the lineage of the training that I got was very permission based and very heart centered. It was not from the mind. It was very heart centered, very um, sort of, uh, female energy based, um, just that, you know, that sort of yin and yang. And so what I learned was that we all have these pictures and internal representations of experiences in our lives. And if the pictures and our internal representations can shift our entire reality of what's going on around us and our perception shifts because we've made a tweak of how we hear something or how we visualize something and just how powerful that is and how it can truly change things exponentially in a very short amount of time. And that it's not uh, somebody else saying, I'm going to do this to you, or I'm going to put my hand on your shoulder and you will be changed forever. And that's magical in and of itself, but that's not how it ended up being for me as my experience. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and then what happened with the hypnotherapy, which is a little different than the hypnosis, you know, you are getting very sleepy sort of thing, is really taking it one level deeper and understanding that we have the answers that we are seeking all available to us at all times through our unconscious and that all hypnotherapy is self-hypnosis. And mm-hmm. that it's not mind control. It's not doing things that are outside of one's value system. And I think there's a lot of fear and um, resistance towards, oh, I'm going to be made to do something that I don't want to do. It's not a stage, you know, entertainment like you're going to, you know, bark like a chicken, suck <laughs> on this imaginary lemon. It's, it's making a connection between one's conscious mind and their unconscious mind and having a doorway for communication. And it simply allows a deeper level of awareness. And since I'm right at the end of the training and I'm going to continue to do more training, it's just another tool that I will be using to help facilitate people for personal change for themselves by going within and allowing themselves to look within and it depends. It's going to depend upon the client. Some people aren't ready for that. Some people, um, and I don't know until it comes up. It's just another tool. Some people are like, let's dive in. Let's allow this to happen. Yeah. And even through the practicing, there have been some people like, that was really awesome. That was some lovely space. And so it's just another level. And I like levels. <laughs> I like learning. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, um, it's definitely I something. Dig it. <laughs> yeah. I, it's, it's hypnosis is something that I want to learn about. It's something on my to-do list. I've done the NLP practitioners and I feel like after the, that I wouldn't mind doing the master prac and also the hypnosis side of things. I think that would be a nice set of tools in the toolbox as you're saying. Um, mm-hmm. And I guess coming back to that as or sitting with that rather right now, I've had conversations with other people who are aspiring to step into the coaching space and they get themselves kind of in a bit of a tangle as to where they should start with their learning. Um, you know, what sort of qualifications should they have? Like what sort of all of this stuff. And because obviously like there's life coaching, there's therapy, there's counseling, there's NLP, there's all of this sort. What was the experience for yourself? And I know as you're saying, you dive, you started out with the health coaching, and the NLP was sort of floating around, but Look, I've I've also had these same sort of questions to myself. You know, should I go and do this? Should I go and do that? And yes, there's always going to be more learning and lessons. And at some point, I will probably do some of the things that I'm thinking about. But what has your experience been when it came to where should I start with the knowledge base to actually step into the coaching so that I feel like I'm reputable? Because mm-hmm. for whatever reason, you know, yes, okay, you can coach off the back of it, but other people are also wanting to see what sort of credentials you have as well. So 
Mm -hmm, what was mm -hmm. your experience when it came to knowing a starting place with education or coaching? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are many different maps of the world that many different people have because we all have our own experience. And as I found, when I was coming from the acting realm, I, don't, I didn't have a background. I had never had a, a coaching moment in my life other than being the friend who people would come to to have a leaning ear on. And I did have a little bit of the complex, like I needed to have a certification of sorts, but I found as I was watching other people, there's a certain realm of like, I need to have this and 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 this long list of all the things and the accomplishments because that's what that person needs to feel as if they're ready to go into the world. And then there were other people that I saw, they got their certification, they never had a business card, they never had a website, but people came to them because what was happening in that relationship was change. And once change happens for one person, the word of mouth to the next person, it doesn't matter. So for some people, they're going to want you to have whatever little letters behind your name because that matters to them. For other people say, can you just work with me to help me open up some choices in my life? And when those choices happen, they're like, great, I love it. Yeah. So I needed to, I needed to first have like a health coach certification from a school that people could find. It wasn't an in-person school. It was an online because this is the world of online. This is the world of things that you can do on the internet. You have the conversations, you have the video, you have your skills labs with fellow people. You're all in it together. You've put in the time and I needed to have a starting point. And so from there, I would always love to do more. I could take another certification from another school. I could continue and I'm going to continue with the, the school that I'm with now that's local. And I'm doing it for me and for my personal growth. And everything that I'm doing for me is going to help anyone that I am with. Yep. And so it is the people that resonate with my journey and my brand and my personality and as we had a conversation somewhere along the way what's the right personality well whatever the heck comes out of my mouth however sure. i'm being that day i might be entertainment theory i might be very purpose driven very serious but that's right for that moment at that time mm -hmm. and so whoever it is that resonates with me is going to be different than who resonates with you who resonates with whoever the coaches are out there it's like seeing an actor on stage you're like yeah I just don't like them. There's something about them I don't like. Great. Well, then find somebody else to watch on stage that you love, that makes you feel connected with yourself. And you're like, that was the experience that I was looking for. And so I believe that it's a person-to-person -person relationship um, like anything else. And if the labels and the titles matter to someone who's seeking it, they're going to find someone that has just the right title for them. And so I technically now I'm a certified health coach and life coach, NLP practitioner, and soon to be hypnotherapist. That's a lot of things that I need to do that because as you know, I relabeled myself as a journey coach because whatever the journey may be, whether it be through food or whether it be through relationships, the person that wants to be on that journey with me and share their journey with me will find me mm. and vice versa. I'll send out the right vibe and they'll be like, oh, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> And it, yeah. it is, it, it is very much a journey and, and maybe just, uh, we'll, we'll start diving into some of the coaching stuff that you do and, and some of the clients that you've worked with as far as not specifics, but, um, where you focus in, because if people are resonating with your story along the line and they're wanting to know a little bit more, we'll dive in shortly as to where they can find you. Um, mm -hmm. but just explain the, the concept of a journey coach, because I know when we were working together, there was a bit mm -hmm. of toing and froing because there is that life coach title that gets thrown around and all of this. Like how did you come to the journey coach and what does journey coach mean to you? Well, once I actually let go, just like the idea of, oh, I'm fat, which I'm not. I let go of that idea. When I realized that I'd carried along a 16-year-old burden of my negative connotation of life coach, I was like, how could I ever call myself that if I have a negative connotation to it? If you say... I want to be rich and famous, but all rich and famous people are, you know, not, I don't like them. Well, then you'll never want to be that. And so once I made peace with that connection 
and realize that I realize this is my journey. My journey is through the relationship of self-love through the avenue of food. That was my relationship. That was my first connection to self-love. And from that became a relationship with uh, money that has been improving as time goes on. There has been other relationships with love to other people because I, until I opened up the door to my own self-love, I couldn't invite other people to it. So it resonated with me because I've always liked that phrase, life is, not, life is a, a journey and not a destination. Yep. Right? That's right. Yes, I, I put up <laughs> everyone. Yeah. And so I'm going to be on my personal journey until the very end. And even if I have a goal in mind that is my quote destination, as soon as I achieve that and have that, I'm going to say, awesome. And I'm going to achieve it and not chase after my proverbial carrot all the time. Mm. I'm going to achieve that moment. And then I'm going to say, great, awesome, wonderful, good for me. What else can I learn? What yeah. else do I want to learn? And so I just feel that that is life. That is learning. There is no end to learning. There is an end to actual physical life. But let's learn all the stuff that we can in our earth suits now so that, you know, if you happen to be somebody that believes in reincarnation, you can send yourself and your soul on to the next person and they'll be a little further along than they would have been. <laughs> Maybe yes. you got to skip a journey along the way. How awesome. Yeah. That would <laughs> be fantastic. Wouldn't that be nice? It would be. And so I just say, I want to live an enjoyable, joyous, contented life. I want to experience all of the emotions and yeah. other people that, being Pollyanna and being like, oh, I'm happy all the time, rainbows and sunshine. That's not real life. Real life is saying, hey, I'm contented, I'm happy, and I'm, I'm inner peace is awesome. But I can feel really mad and angry at somebody. I can feel envious. I can have a moment of like, okay, that was too many tortilla chips. No big deal. Come back to my space and experience all of the realm and open myself up to the full human experience. Because if I kept myself safe, what was I going to get to experience? Safe. Mm. And it can be very scary and scary in a, in a good, exciting way. I mean, a roller coaster is very scary, but it's thrilling True. to open up possibility. And I think that's what I've ex discovered with clients is, oh, I didn't realize I could do that. I didn't even realize that was a choice for me. And when they realize that, that's what I had. Like, oh, I can do that. I can think of it. I can do something different. And I recently just had that for myself. And I was like, oh, what if I chose to just let go of my, you know, on stage career for even two years, maybe even five or 10? What if I didn't do that right now? Mm. Would it mean I'm not an actor anymore? No, you know, I'm, it's like saying, yeah. I'm still going to have that essence that's still part of me, but there's more to the journey. Yep. You know, there's more to the journey. And what do I want my journey to be? And not feeling limited by my own thoughts because they're just a thought. <laughs> absolutely. I, you said it so elegantly and I absolutely loved all of that. So if somebody is watching or listening to the uh, audio, where can they find you? Where can they connect with you if they want to, get to know a little bit more about your coaching services and things. <laughs> well, I have the website and my business is smiling wellness because I do like to smile and I do have an orange car with smiley faces on it. So I truly, truly do. <laughs> and um, it's smiling wellness.com. A little bit about my story is on there. I do have Twitter and I, I'm not on there as much. And I do like Instagram, very pictorial and lovely. And not much on the YouTube channel right now. That's something for the future Yeah. because I'm going to learn to play the ukulele and I'm going to write fun songs about peace and love and happiness. <laughs> that sounds awesome. And whatever else I want to. Yes, I've already written the song, except for I don't have the ukulele, so it looks silly playing my imaginary ukulele. <laughs> but um, it's, it's going to be awesome. I look forward to, to sharing. Just yeah, I can't wait that. to see that one. <laughs> I can't wait to see that. <laughs> So I always round these ones out with what are five tips 
that you could provide for the, the viewers that are watching. And there can be tips from anything in general, whatever's top of mind, whatever comes through, but five tips for them. Five tips. Five sort of mottos that come to mind are, you're more than what you think you are. Live life by choice and not default. Every single moment is a decision of choosing to do something or choosing not to do something. What are you going to choose to do at every moment? In, inner peace is the new wealth. I heard that somewhere and I was like, yup, really rich. And allow change for yourself. Allow yourself to open up to opportunity even if you don't know what that opportunity is. That's as simple as that. Open your, open your heart, open your soul, open to change and open to opportunity. Mm. So, so powerful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, again, I just want to thank you so much for, for coming on here. I've got so much love and respect for who you are as an individual. You're, you're doing an amazing work in this world and you bring so much joy and vibrancy to, uh, well, I was going to say the world and also the people in and around your, your circle. It's, um, I'm so appreciative to, to have you as a friend and I, I really do value you and I appreciate you for coming on here and, and sharing your story because there's immense value in every single step of it and I know there's going to be a few things that people will resonate throughout it so thank you for being you it's well I appreciate it because I it's the only person I know how to be so I might as well be the best version ever thank you for being you <laughs> and I'm glad that I found you so that my journey of the world can be expanded through your viewpoint and we can share that now together and now we get to share with all these other people how magical is that absolutely it's absolutely perfect and wonderful I love it. Love, love, love. All right. Well, you have a fantastic evening because I think it's evening over there and it's, uh, it's morning time over here. So, <laughs> yes, yes. I will. I will. <laughs> so, uh. yay, people. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. You take care and I will speak to you soon. Thanks. <laughs>